everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be deriving the formula QT is equal to Q0 e to the minus T over RC, which is in the capacitor topic for A-level physics. This equation is used when you're looking at the analysis of the discharge of a capacitor. So when you're discharging a capacitor, we're going to be using this formula QT is equal to Q0 e to the minus T over RC. Right, this is not in the course, guys, but it's nice for us to be able to do. So it's not in the course, so don't worry, you won't be able to do an exam. Right, especially those of you who are really interested in where the formula comes from, because I think it's useful to know where the formula comes from and not just simply grab it and plug it in. So we'll start off with the following diagram. So let's say we have a capacitor which is fully charged and it's connected in the circuit as shown. Right now it keeps its charge because it's an incomplete circuit. But the question is the following. What happens when I connect the switch? So once again, so what happens when the switch is pressed? So what is going to happen when the switch is pressed? Right, hopefully we can identify that. When I press the switch, it completes the circuit. The charge will then flow around the circuit until it neutralizes itself. So the charge goes all the way around until there's no more potential difference between the plates. So we were to plot a graph of, let's say, charge against time. So obviously at the start it's fully charged, so the charge will be quite high over here. But then as time goes on, eventually there'll be no charge on the plates, it will drop down. We can see that this is an exponential function, so this is an exponential function. And we're going to prove it today, we're going to prove that QT formula. So we know it's an exponential function, let's try and prove it. Okay, so first we're just going to raise this, right, and we'll just say this. We know that, whoops, there we go. We know that the voltage going in should be equal to the voltage coming out in one loop due to Kirchhoff's law. So the sum of the voltage in will be equal to the sum of the voltage out in one loop. Okay, so what is the voltage going in here? Well, the voltage going in here is from the capacitor. So the voltage from the capacitor, this has changed this. So voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor is a C. There we go will be equal to the voltage coming out. Where is that voltage being dropped across? It's going to be dropped across here. So the voltage will be lost here. So let's call this VR. So that will be equal to VR. Okay. Okay. But we also know that the voltage across the capacitor is related to the charge. So we know that C is equal to Q over V. Okay. So the voltage across the capacitor is equal to charge divided by the capacitance. Okay. So let's now replace it into our formula here. So obviously this is the voltage across the capacitor, so that's replacing the first bit. So we end up with Q over C is equal to the voltage across the resistor. Okay? Right, but the voltage across the resistor here, that will be the same as the current going through it times by the resistance R. The current going through it times by the resistance R. So what is the current going through that, obviously? Now let's analyse it. We know that current in general is equal to the rate of flow of charge, so dq divided by dt. Okay. But because the current is decreasing, think about the current in that circuit. The current, as time goes on, will get lower and lower. So as the current is getting lower, I need to change this equation very slightly. So we need to say that I is equal to minus dq over dt, so the minus sign is important here. So we're going to add the minus sign into it. Why? Because it's a decreasing quantity. So it's a decreasing quantity. So now let's go back to the equation. We know that uh, Q over C is equal to I times by the resistance. Happy? We know that the current is d minus dQ over dt. Let's plug it in over here. So scrolling down so ever so slightly, we end up with Q over C is equal to minus dq over dt times by r. Right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move the dt up, we're going to move the r down, and move the q down. Yeah? So dt comes up, r goes down, the q comes down. We end up with the following, and check your math so you can do this algebra yourself. We end up with 1 over rc dt is equal to 1 over q, or whoops, the minus sign, minus 1 over q dq. Everyone happy? 
Yeah, make sure you know you can see how I've done that. So notice the Q went down, the R went down, and DT came up. Okay, so we end up with 1 over RC DT is equal to minus 1 over Q DQ. Right, from here, guys, we're going to integrate the whole thing. So hopefully some of you can see that. So the integral of 1 over RC DT is equal to minus the integral of 1 over Q DQ. Okay, so let's do that then. So 1 over RC is integrated, becomes T over RC. And the limits are going to be at time t and time 0. And the other one's going to be minus, and the, the, uh, the integral becomes, so 1 over q, if you don't know, the integral of 1 divided by x is equal to ln x. So therefore, this becomes ln q between the limits of the end, q at time t and q at time 0. So make sure we're happy with this. So q0 is going to be the initial charge initial charge and qt is equal to charge at time t okay right so let's expand it out then so the terms scrolling down t over rc minus zero over rc is equal to minus ln qt minus ln q naught okay right happy with that this bit over here goes down to zero because obviously the terms are uh, you know zeros on top so it ends up with t over rc is equal to minus and now we're going to use another trick so we know that ln of a minus ln b is the same as ln a over b we're going to use that over here so check your maps over there so it's going to be uh put the bracket still it's ln qt over q naught there with there there we go okay i'm going to take the minus sign across now so take the minus sign across we're going to end up with minus t over rc is equal to ln qt over q naught okay now getting rid of the ln i'm going to e both sides so let's e both sides so e to the minus t over rc that's the only way you can get rid of the ln will be equal to so when you e the ln it just cancels it out so you end up with qt over q naught wonderful then pulling up the q naught to opposite side we end up with q naught e to the minus t over rc will be equal to q at time t wonderful and then just rearranging that put it into a nice formula we end up with Q at time t is equal to Q naught e to the minus t over RC. Okay, so let's quickly just define a couple of bits. So QT is the charge at time t. Q naught is equal to the initial charge. R is equal to the resistance in the circuit. And C is equal to the capacitance. That makes sense. Think about it. The amount of charge that you have is going to be dependent upon, number one, the initial charge, Q naught. Number two, the resistance in the circuit because the greater resistance you know the quicker it will run itself out and then free the capacitance then the amount of capacitance you have at the start and that is proving our discharge equation guys it's quite complicated you're not required to know it but it's nice for us to be able to do especially those of you who are interested and obviously it's combining your math skills with the physics skills here so look at that once again we're going to go through it from the top one more time it's going to be the following so we had at the start this diagram here I said the voltage in is equal to the voltage out due to Churchill's first law. Therefore, I then replace the voltage going in with Q of C, because that's the capacitance formula. And the voltage across the resistor is equal to I times by R. I was then replaced by minus DQ over DT. The minus was added. The reason why is because it's a decreasing quantity. Scrolling down, we end up with that expression. I then move the R down, the Q down, the DT up, integrated both sides. When I integrated both sides with the limits, it becomes T over RC with the limits and ln Q over here. Right, and then expand it out to T over RC is equal to minus ln QT minus ln Q naught. And I combined the ln QT minus ln Q naught to ln QT over Q naught. And then took the minus sign across. Then I had to get rid of the ln by Eing both sides. So when I E both sides, it becomes 
e to the minus t over rc is equal to qt divided by q0. Bring in the q0 up. q0 times by e to the minus t over rc is equal to qt. And therefore, you just sort the sides. The qt is equal to q0 e to the minus t over rc, where qt is the charge at time t, q0 is the initial charge, r is the resistance in the circuit, and c is the capacitance. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. Make sure you like and subscribe to my videos. Keep me going, guys. Bump it up. Ciao, ciao. Goodbye.